It's a wonderful day. Isn't it, though? Let's see now. We ought to take the curtains down, and the windows need washing. The rugs need going over. Does the prospect scare you? No, no, go right ahead. I'll keep out of your way. <laughs> I'll just lie here and think about beautiful things. For instance? For instance, our beautiful 1847 Rogers Brothers silver plate. Thank you, and good morning, Rip Van Winkle. <laughs> America's finest silver plate is 1847 Rogers Brothers. From Hollywood, International Silver Company, creators of 1847 Rogers Brothers Silver Plate, presents the amusing transcribed adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring America's favorite young couple, Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. It's breakfast time at 1847 Rogers Road, and the Nelson family, now let's see, Ozzie, Harriet, David, and Ricky, yeah, they're all gathered around the breakfast table. Outside, the sky is blue, the sun is shining, and the birds are singing. Yes, sir, spring is really here. Look how blue the sky is, Harriet, and the little tree by the garage has buds on it. Oh, look out the window, boys, there's a robin. Oh, yeah, I saw one yesterday, too, Mom. Yes, sir, spring is really here. Mom? Yeah? I dreamt I was a bird last night. Oh, I've done that often. That's lots of fun. Were you flying around? No, I was eating worms. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's nice. Can I have some more toast, Mom? Apparently the worms weren't very filling. (laughs) Oh, here you are. Pass some more to Daddy, too. Oh, no, thanks, Harriet. I'm fine. Hmm... A wonderful breakfast. That milk was good and cold. If you want some more milk, Pop, you can have mine. No, thanks, David. You drink your milk. Go ahead, Pop. I'll give David my milk. (laughs) I've never met two more generous boys when it comes to giving away milk. You guys want to be athletes and get big and strong. I think you ought to drink your milk. That's what they say in school. Milk makes you big and strong. Vegetables make you big and strong. I'm getting tired of waiting. (laughs) Yes, so am I. Drink your milk. Oh, and David, remind me to give you some money so you can get a haircut today. Down over your collar. Do you really think milk makes you strong, Pop? Well, sure I do. That's an accepted fact. Some people drink goat's milk. Yeah, well, I think that's a little too strong. (laughs) Elephants are big and strong, and all they eat is peanuts. Oh, you've only seen captive elephants at the zoo, David, and the circus. You've never seen the ones that live in the jungle. Do they drink milk? I wouldn't be a bit surprised. How's the milkman get to Africa? (laughs) Well, that's a good question. Harriet, would you like to answer that for Ricky? No, I'm like Ricky. I'd like to hear the answer. (laughs) As soon as I think of one, I'll tell you. I'm all finished, Mom. Come on, Ricky. Pop? Yeah? Cats drink milk and they aren't very big. Yeah, I know, Ricky, and I'm just as surprised as you are. Now go on out and play. Would you like some more of anything? No, no, thanks. She was a wonderful breakfast. Or did I tell you that? Yes, you did, but it's nice to hear it again. Thank you, sir, for the lovely compliment. The pleasure is mine. Pop? Yeah? Do some people really talk like that? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, your mother and I, you just heard us. You see, Ricky, the coming of spring brings out the kindliness. They say nice things to each other. Come on, Dopey, I'm waiting for you. Morning, Oz. Hi, Thorny. I'll move over. Sit down, Oz. Who ever heard of spending a beautiful day like this on the front steps? Oh, I'm just conserving my strength for this afternoon. What's happening this afternoon? I'm going to walk around back and lie in the hammock. (laughs) (laughs) The trouble 
trouble with you, Thorny, is you've got the old spring fever. Winter's gone and spring is here. That's right. Any day now, you'll be returning our umbrella and borrowing the lawnmower. <laughs> what are you staring at, huh? Oh, I'm sorry, Thorny. I just couldn't help admiring that shirt you're wearing. Well, thanks, huh? Really a good-looking shirt. Well, thanks again. Doesn't it make you feel good when somebody pays you a compliment? Sure, naturally. See, nothing but an old, frayed, blue work shirt, half faded in spots, but I compliment you on it and it makes you feel good. <laughs> Well, thanks once more. I like that dish towel you're wearing, too. <laughs> I was merely pointing out that a compliment on even an old shirt makes a person feel good. And there's something about spring that makes people say nice things to people. And personally, I'm all for it. Well, good for you. For instance, I paid Harriet a little compliment. Small one, but very sincere. You should have seen her face light up. Made her happy... Made me happy, started the whole day off right. I'll bet I know what you told her. It was about her new hairdo, wasn't it? No, 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 no. It was... No, it was something entirely different. She is wearing her hair a new way, you know. No, she isn't. Oh, I thought you were more observant than that. <laughs> She's been wearing her hair different for the past week. I'm surprised you haven't noticed it. When did you notice it? I didn't. My wife mentioned it. <laughs> I, uh... I hate to sound inquisitive, Oz, but what was the compliment you paid, Harry? Oh, it was really nothing important, Thorny. Just a little thoughtfulness. Why, Oz, you're blushing. I am not, Thorny. Come on, you romantic devil, you. Tell me what it was. Stop <laughs> tickling me. <laughs> Honestly, Thorny, at times you act like a child. Well, come on, Oz. You can tell your old pal, Thorny. What did you say to her? Well, I, I merely said... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I told her that, that uh, breakfast tasted very good. What's romantic about that? I didn't say it was romantic. I can imagine how disappointed she must have been. Well, she wasn't disappointed, Thorny. She was very happy about it. Was, was, please. Does that make sense? Look at it from her standpoint. Here she is with a new hill house dress. She gets up in the morning, the birds are singing, it's a beautiful day. All she needs to make it perfect is one little compliment from the man she loves. And what do you do? You tell her breakfast is very good this morning. As a matter of fact, it was just two soft-boiled eggs, a, a glass of milk, and some toast. What's so great about that? Come to think of it, the toast was burned a little. <laughs> and the worst part of it is Harriet looked unusually pretty this morning. There were any number of personal compliments I could have. Well, why don't you come right out and say what you're thinking? Why don't you tell me to go back in the house and pay her a real compliment? If you want me to be honest about it, that's exactly what I was thinking. You don't think I'll sound like a silly, romantic fool, do you? Of course not. Every woman enjoys a sincere, personal compliment. You just told me how pretty she looked. Why not tell her? Thorny, that's just exactly what I'm going to do. And right now, too. Mother. It's a lovely day, isn't it? I was just going to say the same thing. I guess spring is here. We had the same old eggs and toast this morning, and Ozzie said it was a wonderful breakfast. Oh, well, you have to overlook those little things, Harriet. Maybe he just felt a little grumpy this morning. <laughs> oh, no, no, he really meant it, Mother. Well, now, the reason I've called is we're having a raffle over at the church, and I was wondering... I hate to interrupt, Mother, but I'm sure Ozzie really enjoyed the breakfast. Oh, I eggs and toast. That's all Ozzy ever wants. Well, he probably thinks that's all you know how to bake. The second prize is a new dress from Andre's. Would you care to buy a couple of tickets, dear? There are quite a few other prizes, too. Mm. Yes, I'll take a couple, Mother. Harriet, you sound worried. Well, frankly, I am now. Oh, Harriet, don't be silly. I've got most of the tickets sold already. So stop worrying about it. 
I was thinking about breakfast. Oh, of course, dear. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was holding you up. You run along and eat your breakfast. Goodbye, Mother. What's wrong with eggs and toast? Harriet, how beautiful you look. I can't hear you. I say, how beautiful you look. Just a minute. Now, what did you say? Oh, I, I, I just said... How beautiful you look, your hair and your eyes. Well, I'm cleaning. I can't help it if my hair gets in my eyes. <laughs> no, no, it, it looks wonderful, very attractive. You're wearing your hair a new way, aren't you? Uh, what do they call that kind of hairdo? It's called tied up for house cleaning. Uh, Harriet! 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 I'm trying to get this room cleaned up. What is it? I just want to tell you what an attractive dress you have on. Looks lovely on you. It's just an old house, Jess. What do you expect? I'm cleaning. Yes, but honestly, dear, on you, it looks like a, a, a formal evening gown. Well, that's a fine thing to say. What? My formal evening gown looks like an old house dress. <laughs> uh, Harriet, you aren't listening. I said you look wonderful. I'm trying to pay you a compliment. Doesn't matter what you're wearing. You'd even look good in an old potato bag. Ozzy, if you don't like my new gray tweed suit, why didn't you tell me when I bought it? I wasn't even thinking about your gray suit. It's your evening gown that looks like an old house dress. <laughs> Let's start again. That's a good idea. Let's go back to breakfast. Exactly what didn't you like about it? Breakfast? It was wonderful. Well, then why were you so sarcastic about it? Well, I wasn't sarcastic about it. I enjoyed breakfast very much. I just shouldn't have complimented you on it. I, I should have thought of something else. But you just said you really liked it. Well, it was delicious. But what was it? Toast and two boiled eggs? <laughs> and the toast was a little burned. I, I, I could have thought of something more romantic to comment on. Your eyes, for instance. They make you think of two boiled eggs? <laughs> Harriet, now wait a minute. We've come to one of those silly little misunderstandings. It happens in every marriage. Fortunately, we both have the intelligence to slow down and straighten things out. <laughs> Apparently, you misinterpreted what I was trying to say. Well, I just no, no, didn't please, like... Harriet. I've sincerely tried to compliment you. You've evidently misunderstood me. Now I can do one of two things. Walk out of the house with a shrug and wait till you cool off a bit? Or explain clearly how the misunderstanding started? Now, we had just finished breakfast. It wasn't an unusual breakfast. In fact, it was the same old boiled eggs and toast that was burnt to a crisp. However, I made a sarcastic... No, 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 no. Let me go at this a different way. Right after breakfast, I happen to say to you... I have... I'll see you later. What? I'll see you later, I said. Ozzy, please, let's not shout at each other. <laughs> let's try to act civilized. Now, what were you saying? Uh, I'll see you later. I think I'll walk out with a shrug and be back later. Okay. <laughs> what happens now, but I think Ozzy's right. There's nothing sweeter to the ear than a really sincere compliment. Like, for instance, the kind you get when you set your table with 1847 Rogers Brothers. Compliments about your sense of beauty, your appreciation of fine quality. For, you know, when you choose 1847 Rogers Brothers, you're choosing the finest silver plate in America. Behind that famous 1847 year mark stand 101 years of tradition and honor. For over a century now, 1847 Rogers Brothers has been created by men whose unexcelled craftsmanship has made them leaders in the field of silver plate design. And from their skill and creative imagination have come the beautiful features that make 1847 Rogers Brothers so outstanding. The lovely gem-like openwork handles, the seamless hollow knife handles, the exquisite ornaments more highly raised, more deeply carved. There's no other silver plate that can equal it. 
Yes, when the silverware on your table bears that year mark 1847, you know you own the best. So look for it tomorrow. The one and only 1847 Rogers Brothers. <laughs> Thorny. Back here, Oz. Oh. Oh, you got the hammock out after all, huh? Yeah, what a life. I've been lying here dreaming I'm on a tropical island. <laughs> it may interest you to know, Thorny, that the advice you gave me didn't work. I told Harriet how beautiful she was, and she practically ran me out of the house. Oh, I wouldn't worry about it, Oz. All women are a little unreasonable at times. She was probably busy or preoccupied or something. What was she doing? Well, she was cleaning the living room. Yeah, that might have had something to do with it. I don't imagine any woman is too happy when she's house cleaning. Well, of course. That explains the whole thing. Just like my wife. When she's got a lot of house cleaning to do, she gets awfully unreasonable. Wants me to help her. <laughs> I don't know why I keep asking for your silly advice, but what do you think I ought to do? Well, you've got nothing to worry about. Just go back in the house. By now, she's had a chance to think it over, and she'll be all apologies. Uh, you say that, Thorny, but are you sure? Am I sure? This is how sure I am, Oz. And believe me, this takes courage. Go ahead, I'm listening. If Harriet isn't sorry, if she doesn't throw her arms around you and give you a big kiss, I will. <laughs> you! You! I love you. I love you too, Pop. <laughs> oh, Ricky, I, I didn't see you there. Uh, where's your mother, do you know? She went downtown. Went downtown? Well, that's strange. She left a note for you on the table. A note? Oh, yeah, I see it. Barney was right, I guess. Probably apologizing. <laughs> Sorry to walk out on you, but I have a date with a handsome man. Hmm. Is it funny, Pop? Uh, yes, it is, uh, in a way. What does it say? <laughs> well, she says, sorry to walk out on you, but I have a date with a, a handsome man. <laughs> you see, that's kind of funny. I don't get it. Who's a handsome man? Well, uh, we don't know, you see. Uh, that's the joke. I still don't get it. Well... Uh, uh, come in, Thorny. Hi, Oz. Uh, oh, hello, Thorny. Uh, I'll explain it later, Ricky. What's this, Oz? Uh, <laughs> Thorny, I'm glad to tell you you are absolutely right. Harriet's really in a good mood, even trying to pull my leg a little. Here, read this note. I see it. Mm, sorry to walk out. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of that? <laughs> oh, I wouldn't worry about it, Oz. Maybe she's just kidding. Well, of course. That, that's what I just said. Handsome man. I'll bet the guy's no better looking than you are. <laughs> Thorny, this note is just a joke. Well, I hope you didn't think I was serious. He's kidding, of course. It's like that old poem, The Handsomer Man. The wife leaves a note saying she's out with a handsomer man. Guy turns out to be her father. Thorny, that's it. Oh, sure. She's probably out with her father, and here you are worried. Oh, I wasn't worried. <laughs> Not with her father. I should have known. I don't think I've ever met her father, Oz. No, he lives in Des Moines, Iowa. <laughs> then how could Harriet be out with him? What I mean is, well, it's something like that. Maybe see? it's her uncle. Or her cousin. Or just some handsome stranger. Wait a minute. Of course she's out with David. She took him down to the barber shop for a haircut. You really think so? Oh, this morning at breakfast she said David needed a haircut. You see, David's the handsome man. Oh. A date with a handsome man, and it's David. <laughs> Hi, Pop. Hello, David. Harry's got quite a sense of humor, hasn't he, Tony? Yes, he sure has. <laughs> Wipe your feet, David. <laughs> What's the joke, Pop? It's your mother, David. You see, she's down at the barbershop getting you a hair... <laughs> I don't get that one either, Pop. <laughs> Look, why don't you boys go out in the kitchen and, and eat some cookies or drink some Coca-Cola? Uh, Mr. Thornberry and I want to talk. Say, maybe that's Harriet now. Hello, Harriet? No, this is Mother. Grandma isn't here. Oh, hello, Graham. Did Harriet get back yet? Uh, no, she isn't here. Do you know where she went? What, didn't she tell you? She phoned Pierre and made a date for 3 o'clock. 
Pierre? Pierre who? Oh, Pierre's beauty shop. That's where she is. I thought she told you. She won five free beauty treatments on our raffle. Isn't that wonderful? Well, for goodness sakes. You know, our neighbor, Mr. Thornberry, he was worried sick, just wondering where Harry had gone. <laughs> you know, he, he's such an inquisitive guy. She did? Yes. She won the dress at Andre. Catherine Thornberry, good for her. What happened to her, Oz? She ran off with the milkman. <laughs> oh, don't look so worried. I'm kidding. What did you say, Graham? I say, have Harriet call me when she gets in. I'll hang up now. I don't want to run over time. You're probably calling from a booth. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, Graham. Thorny, we've got the two luckiest wives in town. Yeah, we know that, Oz, but do they know it? Now, now listen to this. Harriet's mother sold them some raffle tickets, and they both won prizes. Catherine won a new dress at Andre's, and Harriet won some free beauty treatments at Pierre's beauty shop. So Pierre's the handsome man Harriet has a date with. That's, how about that? That silly-looking Pierre. Harriet sure has a peculiar idea on what a handsome man looks like. I've wanted to say that for years, but I thought you'd be a... <laughs> I'll see you later. I want to be home when Catherine gets back with the new dress. This will be a surprise to her. The first time I've ever noticed a new dress. You know, Harriet's going to expect a compliment, too. But she'll have to fish for one after leaving me that note. <laughs> Handsome man. That's wonderful. <laughs> Harriet probably thought that note would worry you. Probably did. Isn't that just like a woman? Just like a woman. How do they always hit it so right? <laughs> Auntie? Oh, hello, dear. Did you miss me? Miss you? Oh, have you been out? Well, yes, I have. You know, I knew there was something missing around here, but I couldn't figure out what it was. Well, didn't you get my note? Note? What? In the... Oh, milkman, two quarts of milk and a pint of cream. Yes, well, I thought out there. Here it is on there. the desk. Read it. What in the world can this be? I'm sorry to walk out on you, but I have a date with a handsome man. <laughs> Isn't it a shame I didn't notice? But I've gotten a big laugh out of this, Hey, Harriet. just a minute. I left that note on the table. How did it get on the desk? <laughs> I've teased you long enough. <laughs> I read the note. And you didn't even get jealous? Oh, of course I did, and I was plenty worried, too. Oh, now I know you're kidding. Were you teasing me when you didn't notice something... something different about me right now? Okay, my little joke is over, so I'll tell you. Harriet, you look wonderful. Do you really like it? Like it? It's beautiful. It's the most unusual way of doing your hair. Let's see it from the side. Oh, it's perfect. That Pierre certainly knows his business. How did you know about Pierre? Oh, with well, your mother called. But that has nothing to do with my compliment. The minute you walked in, I couldn't help but notice it. It's beautiful. You really look glamorous. Oh, thank you, dear. I'm glad you're so observant. Did you know that Catherine Thornberry won the dress at Andre's? Yeah, wasn't that nice? You have to excuse me for going on like this, Harriet, but your hair, I can't get over it. Well, maybe this will help you. Catherine and I traded prizes. I got the dress and she took the beauty treatment. <laughs> well, imagine that. But well, then how should I know you always look like you've just come from the beauty shop? <laughs> That was very nicely done. I thought so. I th oh, I... <laughs> After all, the dress box under your arm, I, I, I should have known. Uh, let's see it. I hear you are. You see, you just think I'm not observant. I saw this package the minute you came in. Oh, Harriet, this is really beautiful. Honestly, do you really think so? Oh, yes. Will you put it on? I'd love to see you in it. You've seen me in it for the past year. I'm wearing the new dress. <laughs> Harriet, there's one thing I want you to believe. What's that? Breakfast this morning really was delicious. <laughs> 
Uh oh. Something wrong? <laughs> Poor Thorny. He thinks Catherine got the new dress. Oh, maybe I can still warn him. I'll be right back. Uh, uh, Ozzy, wait a minute. I think Thorny's already complimented Catherine. Why do you say that? Well, look out the back window. See? You can just see his head sticking out of the doghouse. <laughs> Hey, how'd you like to be Ozzie Nelson right now? I wonder what Harriet will do to him. I know what I'd do, Mr. Smith. Mm, send him to bed without his supper, maybe? No. I'd make him go right down to Mr. Jonathan's silverware store on Rogers Road and bring me back some open stock pieces for my set of 1847 Rogers Brothers. Hey, not bad. Not bad at all. This is the first time in eight years that you can buy extra pieces of 1847. Extra knives, forks, and spoons. You can get all you want in all four lovely 1847 patterns, too. Eternally yours, first love, adoration, and remembrance. And the prices are the same as they were in 1941. A perfect example of the wonderful value that 1847 Rogers Brothers gives you. I've got my eye on that new 1847 Rogers Brothers completing set with the eight butter spreaders, eight ice drink spoons, and eight oyster forks. Oh, that new completing set is just about perfect for everybody. It comes in all four patterns, and the price is only $26 with free gift case. And, of course, once you complete your set of 1847 Rogers Brothers, it's a wonderful feeling. Yes, because then you have everything. Everything of the best. That's what 1847 Rogers Brothers is, isn't it, Mr. Smith? That's right. The best. The finest silver plate in America. The one and only 1847 Rogers Brothers. <laughs> There's just one thing I don't get. If you went to Andre's and not to Pierre's, who was the handsome man in the note? Well, you see, I originally intended to go to Pierre's, but I met Catherine Thornberry downtown, and we decided to swap prizes. And you mean to say that you really think that Pierre is handsome? He's very nice looking. Hand me one of those curlers. Here you are. Well... Don't you think he overdoes it with those waves that he puts in his hair? I think it looks very good. Oh, I don't know, but a man with a permanent wave. Not very manly. Hand me another curler. <laughs> what a thing for a man to have. Do you like my hair? Mm-hmm. Hand me another curler. <laughs> my hair is wavy, but, but it isn't Marcel or whatever you call it. Hand me another curler. For goodness sakes, Harriet, don't take them all. Save a couple for me. <laughs> Tune in again next week to another adventure of Ozzy and Harriet, starring Ozzy Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. And remember, America's finest silver plate is 1847 Rogers Brothers. Yes, Harriet, America's finest silver plate is 1847 Rogers Brothers. Appearing in support of Ozzie and Harriet were David and Ricky Nelson, John Brown, Lorene Tuttle, and yours truly, Vern Smith. Original music was composed and conducted by Billy May. The Red Cross is known the world over as a symbol of mercy and kindness. And we recognize the organization it stands for as a miracle worker in the relief of human suffering. Give through the Red Cross, the heart of America. <laughs> The preceding program was transcribed. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.